there's one name that's been repeatedly mentioned by Boris Johnson supporters over the past week. Sue Gray. Sue Gray. Sue Gray. Sue Gray. Sue Gray. Sue Gray will decide. This is Sue Gray. She's a senior civil servant and has worked with both Labour and Conservative governments. Here she is with Cabinet Minister Michael Gove. Her current job is Second Permanent Secretary to the Cabinet Office. That's the department which supports the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. It's located next door to number 10. It's the very centre of government. And Sue Gray is now the centre of attention because she's investigating allegations about a number of different parties and gatherings in Downing Street while England was under a variety of Covid restrictions. The former Labour Minister, Douglas Alexander, used to work with her. She's an extraordinarily accomplished and capable civil servant. The Guardian reports that she has a reputation for vigorous internal investigations and the Times says she was once considered Whitehall's sleazebuster in chief. Sue Gray was previously in charge of ethics at the Cabinet Office and ran a number of investigations, including one in 2017, which led to the sacking of Damien Green, who was a close ally of the then Prime Minister Theresa May. He'd admitted to lying about having porn on his computer. And now Sue Gray turns her attention to what happened in Downing Street during the pandemic. The first event she's looking at is on the 15th of May 2020. The Prime Minister and his wife shared cheese and wine with staff in the Downing Street garden. Five days later, on the 20th of May, there was the Bring Your Own Booze Party, also in the garden. Then in December, there were several Christmas gatherings or parties, as well as an online quiz attended by the Prime Minister via video camera. Boris Johnson insists rules weren't broken. Sue Gray's task is to establish if that's true. Here's the Paymaster General outlining the terms of her investigation. It will establish the facts uh, and if wrongdoing is established, there will be requisite disciplinary action taken. Disciplinary action may be taken, but here's where it gets complicated. Once Sue Gray has finished her report, it's not up to her what happens next. Here's Douglas Alexander again. Ultimately, it's a political judgment, not a legal judgment, because Sue Gray's report will be comprehensive and detailed, but will deal with the facts. What happens with those facts will then be determined by the politicians. What happens next is up to the Prime Minister, other ministers and MPs to determine. Which leads us to this question. Is it Boris Johnson who will decide what happens with that report? Because a lot of people will think that that's absurd. Well, he's already been very clear. The findings of that report will be made public and he will make a statement to Parliament. Or you could put it another way. So he'll decide what happens to him if it's determined that he broke the rules? Well, the Prime Minister is accountable not just to, the, to Parliament and obviously Conservative MPs, but the country as a whole. There's also the question of whether a senior civil servant working closely with the Prime Minister can act as an independent investigator. Chris Bryant's a Labour MP, a former minister, and he's concerned. He tweeted, to be clear, Sue Gray is not independent. She may be independently minded, but she's a civil servant reporting on her boss. This is not a quasi-judicial process. But not everyone agrees with that. One insider told The Guardian, the biggest mistake they have made if they want to cover anything up is to appoint Sue Gray because she will investigate the claims and point the blame at those responsible. Now, we don't know what Sue Gray's inquiry will find or what it will conclude. It's also possible the matter could be taken out of her hands. If evidence emerges of what was potentially a criminal offence, the matter would be referred to the Metropolitan Police. And the Cabinet Office's work may be paused. For the moment, though, we wait for Sue Gray to share her report, and some certainly do not underplay her stature. In his memoir, the former minister, David Laws, here on the left, recalls being told by another minister, Oliver Letwin, on the right. It took me precisely two years before I realised finally who it is that runs Britain. Our great United Kingdom is actually entirely run by a lady called Sue Gray. Now, no doubt she would not categorise it in that way, but it's not an exaggeration to say that Sue Gray's report impacts the future of the UK. It may find rules weren't broken. But if it finds that they were, and that the Prime Minister was a willing participant, Boris Johnson's position will come under extreme pressure. She still wouldn't be running the country, but a report has the potential to change who leads it.